What's up guys, it's Johnny Candido of Candido Training HQ. Today's video is on an accessory that I actually have not done until now. In this cycle where I hit a 613 pound big squat PR and potentially add 620 pounds possible. Um, you know, but we won't speculate too much. Anyways, that exercise is the Platz squat. Now what this is, it's just another term for a high bar narrow stance squat with elevation on the heels to really force those knees as far forward as possible in unrealistically upright position. This is named after Tom Platz, who had one of the most legendary sets of legs to ever exist, big succulent manlet legs. And I admire him a lot, he's an old school legend. And this is kind of the squat style that he had. He didn't always use an elevation, but for the sake of this exercise, that is what we're talking about. So first of all, I think this is very useful for a lot of you guys, most likely right now, because if you are in a home gym setup, you need some way to replace that machine work. So I basically use this to replace the reverse hack squat. Now I have three specific tips. First of all, is to make sure your knees are in as much as possible. And this is really important because a lot of times when people do narrow squat work, their knees naturally shoot way out, they rotate their feet out, and then at that point you're defeating the purpose because now you're externally rotating at the hips, you're, in a, you're basically stretching your adductors and involving them to some extent, rather than actually giving them a break and just focusing on keeping the hips relatively internally rotated with a lot of knee extension. Secondly, my main tip is to work in the very high rep range. So I actually use 15 rep sets and that's to differentiate the loading because you have to keep in mind, specificity comes down to both position and load. And a lot of people are in a home gym type situation now. So that's partially also why I'm making this video because if you don't have access to like, let's say a reverse hack squat, uh, that you could do for eights and that's still fairly distant work. Well here, I recommend making up the difference by pushing it to 15s. And now it's not overlapping as much with your competition squat work. Because if you get to a point where you're doing 405 on your third barbell lift, now that fatigue is most likely going to carry over and there's just gonna be more similarities. Now, since you are using really high reps, another point I strongly recommend is to not do straight sets. Always adjust the loading down if possible. The reason for that is due to the Henneman size principle. You basically only get activation on the relevant fast switch fibers later on in the set of a very high rep set. And if you're, uh, if you're basically going to do RP7 on your third set, on a really high rep uh, setup, that means your first set's probably gonna be RP2. You're probably going to not even have relevant activation in that entire set, or at least it's going to be very minimal and, and not have a strong hypertrophy effect. So what I recommend is do something like RP6 and a half for the first set, and then cut down by 10 to 15 pounds. And then by the third set, you'll probably be back up to RP6 and a half to seven. That way, each set is fairly effective. My last and final tip is to actually do this on the day where you do your competition squat single. So the reason why I set it up like this is because by doing that, you're giving yourself the maximum amount of time to recover before your next competition squat single. A lot of people set up a daily undulating periodization program with kind of the basic clear cut, okay, you have a strength day, you have a hypertrophy day, and then you have a power day. The problem is, Powerlifting is relatively unidimensional. You're not really going to have a negative effect on your top end strength by working in hypertrophy after the top end strength's already hit. It's not like that's really how adaptations work um, in the context of lifting. But what is true is priority in terms of fatigue management matters a lot. So just general fatigue. So like I said, I think that you do want variance. You want a lot of variance within a workout and within the week, but you also want a clear priority. So if you put your distant work on a same day where you're doing other variations, and then you have a day where you're doing competition singles and they're only three or four days apart, well, now you're gonna have a negative effect immediately. So overall, I recommend, like I said, doing sets of 15. For most people, I think three sets of 15 is doable, starting at RP six and a half, then a downshift in weight, keeping RP relatively steady at that point, and then adding 10 pounds across all three sets. So if you go RP six and a half, then you drop down by 10 pounds and you drop down by another 10 pounds. Then when you add 10 pounds, just make sure to add it evenly so that you keep maintain that same spread and then hit a test set of 15 about mid cycle. I personally do this in the first four weeks of a seven week cycle. And then when I rerun it, just add 10 pounds across everything, keeping everything else the same. Also, it is worth mentioning that data doesn't support periodization as much for hypertrophy work as it does for strength work. So that's one of the reasons why on a slot like this, I do recommend just keeping the rep range exactly the same and very gradually pushing it. 
just keeping it 15s, run it for four straight weeks or so, add weight, reset, and then run it again if you got positive effects. And if you didn't, then drop it. As always with videos like this, I say just try it. You know, we can argue all day and night about certain reasons, this and that, but if you're someone like me who just never seriously considered doing this lift as, you know, maybe the third most important squat pattern within a training cycle, then just give it a shot. And if you get good results from it or you notice that you're getting a certain amount of quad doms without having the same limiting factors um, as far as other areas being more sore first, then it's probably helping. So make sure to like the video, support the channel, subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, who comes short again and again. If I make this shot, you have to subscribe. Fuck.